I hope you're ready. Hydra Electronics, but make sure to keep your eyes glued to the screen. It's time for PJ and Mega Man 7. Hey, everybody. Uh, I am PJ, and this is Mega Man 7. Um, I'm going to be assisted by uh, the couch here. They can introduce themselves. Maybe. I guess. <laughs> well, I'm Mac Richter. I'm just here to make sure Rush does bad things. Uh, I'm Colonel Fasco. I'm here to not make sure that Rush does bad things. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. I'm Ion, and I'm here to yell at PJ. Perfect. <laughs> All right. So, if we're good to go, we'll get started in three, nope. Three, <laughs> two, one, go. All right, welcome to Mega Man 7. Um, it starts off with this, uh, this pretty lengthy cutscene uh, where Otto jokingly gives Mega Man the most indestructible helmet in the Mega Man universe and then takes it back and gives him this blue thing instead. Um, so I guess we'll just talk a little bit about Mega Man 7. Um, it is by far the most unpopular speed game in, uh, in Classic Mega, and it's a pretty unpopular game even casually. Uh, most people don't like this game. I think it was, it was released, what, shortly after, like a few months after X2? So I think people had this expectation of the X games, and then uh, they were presented with this, which is quite a bit different. But uh, Mega Man 7 has a lot of depth. It's actually a really great speed game. Uh, so I'm, I'm really excited to show it off. Um, I'm going to be playing the 100% category, uh, which is a really uncommon category for Mega Man games. Uh, generally, it's just like any percent, and then sometimes Buster only. Um, I think like for Mega Man 6, it's what, like 20 seconds different for 100%. And in Mega Man 5, it's sometimes the same category, depending on what you do. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, so it's really uncommon to actually have a 100% category. Um, and it's, it's very different. The stage order is entirely different. We collect, uh, I think, eight extra upgrades, and some of those require multiple, uh, multiple visits, multiple um, unlock criteria. Um, and we actually use everything that we collect except for, except for Proto Shield. Uh, so it's a really cool category, and I'm, I'm excited to show it. Yeah, like, there's a ton of things in this game with, like, how each of the weapons interact with the environment and things that you just don't see normally. Like, when you play normally, if you don't try every weapon at a bunch of different spots, you're not going to see. But to get 100%, you have to see most of those interactions. So if you're someone that played through this game, like, one time, or you've only seen it in any percent run, this is going to be worth watching, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think so. So uh, at the end of Mega Man 6, spoiler alert, uh, Wily is put in jail, and he just broke out. So Mega Man's upset, and he's going to go catch him. Um, there are three different ways to end the intro stage. Uh, you can either end by taking damage, which I'm going to do, or you can end by uh, killing base, or by... Um, or just by timing out the fight. And base will be like, ah, I see, they're just as true. You're just as strong as they say. Um, but it's a little bit faster to, to end by taking damage. Mm -hmm. This is Mega Man? <clears throat> you better tell me who you are? No, bye. Base? So I'm playing on the English version. Um, Gameplay-wise, it's identical to the Japanese version, but there are some some issues with the cutscenes in this game, uh, which we, we may or may not talk about later. Mm -hmm. uh, but I'm playing this version because I like it. All right, so we're starting with Freeze Man first, uh, because by the time we get to Junk Man stage, we need to have beaten Freeze Man and Cloud Man. And uh, starting with Freeze Man is just the only way that we can follow weakness order, basically. And you do not want to use the Mega Buster more than you absolutely have to in this game, because it's pretty terrible. Yeah, it does less damage than most other entries in the series, and it, I don't know. It's just not as good of a weapon. <laughs> yeah, it takes longer to charge and does two damage fully charged instead of three. Okay, so this thing here is a Rush Plate. Uh, if you collect all four Rush Plates, then you unlock the Super Adapter. Um, which is a really cool, really cool upgrade. We'll be seeing actually a bunch of it later, which is nice. 
And now we're gonna go, hopefully, get... Okay. Get hit and come back here. Yeah. And get Rush Search. Yeah. So like, you don't necessarily need Rush Search, but it does save you a whole bunch of time because it's either you get Rush Search and dig up the items that you need for 100%, or you go buy them from the store. Yeah. And there's no good way to like duplicate money or anything like that, so it's either grind <laughs> for a long time or you just dig up stuff like we're about to do in a second. If you dig in specific spots, Rush will get like the secret items or whatever that you could get from the store normally. And if you dig anywhere else, he'll dig up like random power-ups <laughs> and things too. Or sometimes, you know, junk and cans and whatnot. Sometimes S tanks, sometimes extra lives. Um, there's a bunch of stuff that Rush can dig up and, and we'll be talking about that more later too. Um, there's no indication for like what you can, or where the hidden items are. Uh, you either like own a Nintendo Power subscription or you buy them from the shop, basically. The freeze fight is really cool to do, Buster only. Is it? It really yeah, is. I see. It's, it's really I hard. See. It's pretty tough. <laughs> All right. We'll get so fun you had to do it again. <laughs> yeah. We'll just get that death out of the way. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, Freeze Man has um, the pretty classic AI pattern of jumping whenever you press the fire button. Mm -hmm. And he also won't take action until you take action at the beginning of the fight. Yeah, he's very reactive, which is interesting. He doesn't just flow through his own cycle or pattern. He kind of reacts to what you do. But he only does that on a surface level. Like, he reacts to button presses. So if you do, like Peach is doing, like, you jump and then shoot, you'll get him when he tries to jump over your shots. Here we go. All right. Nice. Much better that time. Um, yeah, so the, the Charge Buster does two damage, fully charged. Bosses have 28 health. Uh, lemons do one damage, and a Half Charge also does one damage. Um, so just from a damage perspective, it's the Buster is pretty terrible. Um, but the Lemons also, the Lemons are just the, the uncharged pellets that you shoot, the, the yellow things. Uh, they also travel really slowly in this game, and they fire at an inconsistent height. Because when Mega Man walks, his gun position actually bobs, and it fires out of his gun position and not at a set height. So uh, sometimes the, pellet, the lemons will just completely miss the target. Uh, it's just, it's really inconvenient. Mm -hmm. So the first few stages are pretty rough as you uh, accumulate weapons, but the weapons in this game are extraordinarily good. Yeah, which more than makes up for it. Like, pretty much every weapon in this game is very, very useful. Mm -hmm. Except for the Proto Shield. Except for the Proto yeah. Shield. Because it's, it's like you have a shield and you can just use your buster, and so it's like the buster's already not great, so. All right, first man stage is immensely complicated. Um, there's a whole bunch of like one-off glitches and <laughs> unique bugs that exist only in this stage, and uh, none of them are positive. No. <laughs> So the main thing that's kind of an issue speed-wise with this level is that you can't see it now because it hasn't kicked in yet, but there is fluctuating water levels. Yeah, it starts right now. Yeah, so the rate that you go through the stage, like if you take a different amount of time, the water will be at different heights, and that's really important for later. We're about to get to it. Like, right. like if he had got here at a different time, the water would have been all the way up and didn't have to wait for that part. But when you have to buster down the crab, yeah. there's there's not a lot else you can do. It just takes a while to get to that part of the stage. And this is the big room right here. Uh, we're gonna have to take an extra cycle here now. Yeah, I think so. If you have to stop for that, you're gonna have to. Oh, he shot a lemon. I oh, could have gone. Man. I could have gone. But yeah. uh, a death here takes you all the way back to the uh, um, right after the the crab screen, basically. Yeah, the crab is the checkpoint. Oh, you should have kept the. Yeah, the I, sh I could have. I could have. I don't want to lose a minute from bubbles. I don't blame you. No. <laughs> 
Okay. I guess something to keep note of, uh, like, it might look like there were opportunities to maybe slide across spikes, but the invincibility period in this game is extremely short. Mm -hmm. So oh, yeah. you have less freedom to do that than it looks like. Yeah, yeah you have uh, 60 frames of invincibility. So you have exactly one second of invincibility after your hit. Um, the recoil animation is also really short. So damage boosts are very good in this game. Like combined with the terrible buster and enemies having a ton of health, uh, damage boosting is great, but you have to do it in a, a pretty specific way or else you'll just die. Yeah. Like, it's really good to take damage to go through enemies and whatnot, but using it to go across, like, spikes and things like that is really, really finicky. Because mm -hmm. if you don't just jump immediately after you touch the spikes, you're probably just going <laughs> to die. Just you're, you're dead. All right, so Burst Man gives us the Danger Wrap, which is my favorite weapon in the entirety of Classic it's so Mega Man. Cool. It's um, it fires a bomb inside of a bubble, uh, so it floats. But you can fire it in three different trajectories, or you can not use the bubble, and you can drop it as a landmine. Mm -hmm. um, it does a ton of damage and has ridiculous utility. Uh, it's, it's just a fantastic weapon. We're going to be using it pretty much all over the place yeah. the rest of the run. So, like, there's an extra thing about the Danger App, right? Is that well, when you drop the mine, it'll just stay there for a good bit, and you just can walk into it. Or in some cases, you can kind of just walk up to them and spam it. Which yeah. does like an astronomical amount of damage to them. It's incredible. And of course, like because it fires a bubble, you can trap enemies in it too. And they just kind of float there. You can push the bubble around. And you can crash it into enemies or just have fun with it if you want to. Yeah, so Cloudman Stage has a really cool gimmick in that you can uh, change kind the of weather. influence the weather. Mm -hmm. Nice, got the shot. Yeah, those little floating weather dudes that bob up and down if you hit them with. Uh, specific weapons, most of the weapons don't do anything, but in the case of Freeze Cracker, the weapon from Freeze Man, it makes it snow, which is nice because uh, when it's storming, it's hard to see a lot in this stage, honestly. And there's a section coming up ahead made it. where all these things that are covered in ice, you normally couldn't see them, which makes Cloud Man a very difficult stage if you're not familiar with it. Yeah, absolutely. And it causes a lot of lag, too, mm -hmm. uh, the platforms being invisible, because there's like a, a foreground object around Mega Man that uh, makes them visible, and that uh, it slows the game down a lot. So yeah. it's it's prettier when it snows, but it also reduces a lot of lag. Yeah. The lag wouldn't be such a big deal if it didn't have all those birds that drop oh all the mini God. birds on the screen. Yeah, they, one they of those things hatches, just just die and try again, you'll be faster. They're like, this is the spot where we put all of the, the, the eggs <laughs> that spawn like 20 enemies. This is good. All right, so this is Proto Man. Uh, we need to get to pr the Proto Shields in 100% because it's a thing that we can get. Um, and in order to do that, you have to visit Proto Man in both of the places. Uh, so once in this stage and once in Turbo Man's stage, and then you have to fight him. Um, yeah, he gives you like little hints as to where you can find some other things too, which is neat. Like he just has some nice little dialogue. But yeah, his hint here is to try using the fire weapon in the forest. I don't. So he's I, a terrible person. I don't know if I like that. No, advice. I don't like that advice. No. So uh, what we saw in, in Burst Man's uh, fight is that it, it's probably the biggest flaw in this game, I would say. Uh, the bosses are either completely trivial or super, super long and boring. Uh, because most of them have like this really long flinch animation when you hit them with their weakness. Mm -hmm. So Burst Man got recoiled and dropped the bombs on the ground. And they usually get a bunch more invincibility frames. So the fight's just like really slow and, and non-threatening. Um, but there are some interesting ways to work around it. So if you hit Cloud Man with the Danger Wrap, he becomes encapsulated in the bubble and floats to the top of the screen and then falls down and then floats up to the top of the screen again. Which is the way that most people probably fought him with the weakness. Yeah, yeah. But the thing PJ did was like, if you just drop the landmine, there's no bubble for him to get stuck in. So you get the same damage, mm -hmm. but you don't have to wait for him to like float up and then pop and fall all the way down. So. Yeah, it's really nice. Yeah. And there's a, a similar abuse on, uh, on Junk Man too using the Thunderbolt. Uh, so the Thunderbolt's a, a really great weapon. Um, it fires this orb of electricity that will split once it hits somebody, so it, it hits twice sometimes. Um, it's pretty much an insta-kill on, on most of like the low-tier to, to medium-tier enemies in this game. Mm -hmm. It's a very fast kill if you just stand in front of things and spam it, too. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, the, the whole thing about it dealing extra damage is there's the large shot, and then it'll split into the little ones, and both of the little ones can hit the enemy at the same time. So if it's an enemy that doesn't get invincible when it's hit, it just eats all of that damage. Or in the case of the boss Junkman here, 
his invincibility doesn't really last all that long. So you'll hit him with the first shot. And then you can get him with the second one too. It's a little cool. All right, so that death is intentional. Um, Junkman stage is one of few stages in this game that branches. So you can either take the bottom path there uh, to get to Junkman, which has an extra elevator and all of this molten lava or slag, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. um, it's really, really a, a terrible path that you'll never see in an any percent run. But the rush plate is down there, uh, and there just happens to be a checkpoint right before it. So we go and we grab the rush plate, and then we go up through this path, and this path is uh, faster, and it has rush jet. Yeah. Um, and rush is extraordinarily good in this game. Uh, rush coil is really fast, really uh, powerful. It launches Mega Man really high. Uh, and Rush Jet is also pretty interesting. Like, I would say the Jet's a little unwieldy at times, but it does allow you to just fly over a bunch of rooms. Like, you could fly over this one, but that little snake dude in the middle makes the game lag like nothing else. Yeah, so you, most of the time you don't want to do it. That's what the Danger Wrap does. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it just kills everything. Destroys it. All right, so Junkman uh, also has a flinch animation. Um, but if you hit him with the split part, I, I don't know if I had mentioned that earlier. I was focusing on not dying. Yeah. Uh, but if you hit him with the split part, he doesn't actually take the flinch. Uh, we do have to reset his pattern once because there's not enough time before he begins his invincible phase. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, that was good. Yeah. Um, as you may have noticed in the stage select screen, uh, we only have access to four robot masters off the bat. Um, we have to do this little intermission section, go fight a clown and then we get access to the other four. Um, so that's coming up next. Mm -hmm. This weapon is uh, probably the most notorious weapon in the game. Uh, Junk Shield is the destroyer. Uh, it creates these three orbiting junk satellites, uh, and each of them can hit multiple times. And it destroys it all of the enemies <laughs> and the frame rate all in yeah. one button press. Yeah, so it's a really powerful weapon. It's great if you're playing casually and you just need like a quick get out of jail free card. Mm -hmm. Just like pause, equip, junk shield, press a button and all the bad guys go away. Yes. Uh, but in a speed run, you basically, well, I basically never want to use it because uh, it's multiple sprites and when they hit something, they create more sprites and uh, you can't get rid of it in a hurry. When you press the, the fire button again, it, it detonates. It, it stays on screen everywhere. even longer. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so it causes a ton of lag and it uses a lot of ammo, which is uh, causes problems with weapon drops. So. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm going to try not to use it whenever possible, but sometimes you just need to use the best weapon. <laughs> yeah, if you're selective about which rooms you use it in, the lag's not that big of an issue, but the weapon drops are definitely a big thing. Like, mm. you're using it to destroy every enemy that dares jump at you, <laughs> and if they all drop ammo, then it sucks. You just lose a lot of time. Yeah. So I'm kind of with PJ on that, and that <laughs> if you can kind of dance around using it, it's probably for the best not to. Yeah, and the other weapons are so good in this game, there's, there's usually another viable alternative. The most important thing here is to give shout outs to Second Plant Man. Um, this is the Robot Museum. There are a bunch of other Robot Masters from one through six in these tubes. But for some reason, Plant Man is stuck in two different tubes. Mm -hmm. And uh, I don't know why, yeah. but I get a kick out of it. And the, the song that was playing is like a very long medley. <laughs> of like a whole bunch of different old Robot Master songs, but you only hear like five seconds of Cutman's theme. So <laughs> yeah. I, I, I recommend going and listening on YouTube or something too, because it's, it's, it's very nice. Danger Rap. Danger Rap's the best. It's important to decorate the door afterwards. All right. So, um, things are gonna get a little bit interesting here. Uh, ordinarily, you would, you would go to Slash Man next because Slash Man is weak to the Freeze Cracker. Um, we're gonna go to Shade Man instead for purposes of the 100% route. Um, Shade Man is weak to Wild Coil from Spring Man, um, who is obviously not dead yet, but he's also weak to getting punched. And uh, we've completed the Super Adapter. We have all the Rush Plates. Uh, so we're gonna, we're gonna punch Shade Man to death yeah. instead. Like, if, if there's anybody out there that has either like, had trouble with Shade Man or fought him like, speed-wise quickly with that stupid coil strat where you have to position yourself properly and everything. This is going to be the most cathartic thing you've ever seen. I know it was for me to see PJ just yeah. punch <laughs> the heck out of the bat. <laughs> oh, my God. By the way, PJ, thank you for playing the correct music. Yes, you're welcome. Yes, yeah, so there's an Easter egg that I'm sure chat is yelling about. Um, <laughs> if you hold the B button when you choose Shade Man's stage, um, 
Shoutouts to Van Pukin, the best Mega Man 8 mini boss. <laughs> <laughs> um, then you get the uh, the Ghost and Goblin theme instead. But the Ghost and Goblin theme doesn't sound great with the Mega Man 7 sound font. And after having heard several thousand hours of the Ghost and Goblin theme in my life, I am content to listen to the best track in classic Mega Man. Instead. Yeah, like. The Ghost and Ghost theme is great, but like you said, it's not good in this game. And this track is amazing. I love it. I don't know why they picked this stage to, <laughs> you know, have an optional song out of all of them. This stage is, it's a unique case because it really feels like a Wily stage. This stage is so complicated. There's so many cool little uh, features in it. Like, at the beginning, it has a special opening where Mega Man looks at the moon and watches it get revealed by the clouds. In, uh, in one of the other screens, the one with the two dogs up there, um, the moon is visible again, and if you wait, it'll get covered up by clouds. And the dogs are actually werewolves, so they'll transform back into knights. Um, this is another stage that has branching paths. Um, it has uh, a cool, like, elevator section with zombies that jump through stained glass windows. Yeah. It's got so much cool stuff in it. It's a shame we can't show any of it. No. <laughs> no. no, we absolutely cannot. <laughs> All right, so Super Adapter is actually really tough to use optimally because you can't start charging again until the fist comes back. Sock them toes, PJ. Nice. There you go. So I'm punching him in a really specific way so that I'm, I'm close enough to grab the fist. And if I mistime it, um, then like the fist has to follow me all the way back to the ground and then I miss the cycle. Um, but I didn't, so that's, that's cool. Um, we have some time for donations now, if you'd like to. Oh, I'd be delighted to. We have $50 from Ricotta. Hard to believe it's been 10 years. Here's to PJ continuing to break games in very unique ways and to team poor life choices. And we have $100 from Match Caboose. Hey, good luck with one of my favorite runs, PJ. Here's a few bucks to a good cause. And $200 from FubaJube139. Happy 10-year anniversary, GDQ. Good luck to PJ on the run. Let's go, good boy, Skip. Yes. Thanks so much, everybody. Um, so Shape Man uh, rewards us with the actual best weapon in Mega Man 7, which is the Noise Crush. Um, it is... <laughs> It is devastating. Yeah. Noise Crush is ridiculously good. It's a better Mega Buster because the whole thing is you can charge it, but the way they wanted you to do is they want you to shoot at a wall and it rebounds and hits you again. And whenever you touch the wave, you just have this giant shot that you can shoot at and it kills everything. But it's really slow when you shoot it, so you just shoot and then slide into it like that and you yeah. just instantly get the Devastator. It's incredible. This is a fun room. This is like cheating. Yeah, he just yeah. cheated. He didn't even... How dare he? <laughs> oh. he <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, um, that was the Super Adapter again. We have to use it to get to this platform. Um, and this is where we get the Super Adapter upgrade, the Hyper Fist. Um, so now instead of firing maybe a third of the screen, this will fire full screen and home. Uh, it's pretty awesome. Here's our next uh, Turbo Man visit. There it was. Yeah. <laughs> There's uh, meant to be a cutscene with Proto Man there, but uh, he just kind of just said bye. Yeah, um, I never knew about that until Fractal Fusion mentioned it, so shout outs to him. Uh, long time, well known uh, Mega Man Tasser. Um, yeah, so the, the cutscenes for Proto Man begin on the frame that you hit the ground in his room. Um, Yes, no, so essentially, <laughs> like, like, you start the cutscene on the same frame or very close to it whenever you're leaving the room. So the cutscene starts, so the game thinks you've sat through the whole thing, but you're, you're just gone and you've beaten the stage by the time Proto Man's done talking. Nope. Ugh. Uh, so this is the actual Turbo Man fight, which we were not expecting to see. <laughs> yeah. There's yes. a thing about Noise Crush where, you know, like you'll shoot it and it'll bounce off walls like I mentioned before. And it keeps going even through cutscenes and things like that. So what you can do is you can shoot it as you enter the room. It'll just keep bouncing around and it can hit the boss as its health is filling up. And the boss has such a low amount of health that it just dies. 
Yeah, bosses in this are vulnerable once their health starts filling, not when you gain control in the battle. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, you, you have another chance on Spring Man, right? Yeah, yeah. So, like, something that a, a few people complain about is, like, I want to pick between all eight of the dudes. I want to choose my guys at the start. But for, for speed purposes, you can't really... It wouldn't really matter no, like, who you start with. You kind of have to do it in the same order no matter what. Uh, like, you would start with Freeze in 100%. You'd start with Club Man and Any, mm -hmm. mostly because of, like, the, the rush things that you get. And uh, the, the weapons are so good at the beginning. Like, the first four weapons are all incredible. Yeah. So that doesn't really matter all that much. But the, the big thing is that, like, you think if Shade Man's weapon has that property where it bounces back and forth, couldn't you just kill the majority of the bosses with it and save a lot of time? And the answer is no, because in order for it to work, the boss door has to be like low to the ground for you to shoot in and bounce around so that it actually hits them. But the majority of the other bosses don't have that property. Or in some cases, they get angry when you try to do it. <laughs> like, yeah. uh, specifically Cloud Man. So uh, if you try to kill Cloud Man very quickly, which you can do easily with like the, the danger wrap if you shoot it in, you can trap Cloud Man in the bubble. Uh, he calls this lightning down right before he gets hit by it and it starts wrapping around the screen very rapidly <laughs> until the until the game gets angry and just kills Mega Man instantly. So that, I don't know, the, the two places that, <laughs> that it's done, like Spring Man and on Turbo are the only ones where it really works because yeah. there's something dumb everywhere that breaks the game when you try to do it. Yeah, and as good as Noise Crush is, you would never want to try and do that stage first because um, you'll never kill anything in this stage. No. You're not going to kill, like, the eight health. <laughs> the <laughs> crows that have eight health. <laughs> All right, so uh, this is obviously Proto Man. Um, the stage select, as you probably guessed by now, was not an accident. We do have to revisit. Um, or rather, you have to you have to go in this room to fight Proto Man after you visit him in Turbo and Cloud Man stage. Um, so we could either do Turbo Man first, or we can uh, revisit Shade Man stage. And it just happens to be faster to do it this way. We have to come back for the best item in the game. Yeah, of course. Okay. So Proto Man uh, either doesn't take damage or takes only one damage from everything except uh, Mega Buster. And you can sometimes get these extra hits in, like I'm shooting over his shield sometimes and shooting, uh, chasing the charge shot with, with lemons, and sometimes those will do extra damage. But uh, the fight is just, just really slow, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so now we get uh, we get the proto shield, which we absolutely don't want. Um, you can't give this to me, don't you? Yeah, no, no, no. I don't want it. Fine. No, it's okay. No. no. <laughs> um, yeah. So the problem with proto shield, besides everything, is that it's supposed to block things, but it doesn't block if you're jumping or moving. Um, and you also can't move while you fire the Buster. So it's uh, they somehow made the Mega Buster worse. It's purely defensive, which is like, why would you want to be defensive in a Mega Man game? Mm -hmm. It's the Jump and Shoot Man <laughs> series for a reason. This is a really cool stage. It is. Like, most of the stages are neat, but I, I really like some of the gimmicks in this one. You get all these logs falling over the waterfalls. I think uh, since we had a death in Freeze Man stage and missed some bubble cycles, I think I'll try and show another one of my favorite gimmicks in this stage. Oh, please do. So uh, this is the power of Rush Jet, yeah. by the way. Rush Jet is, uh, it, it's really weird in this game because you have full control still. You can slide on him. Um, you, can, you can jump, you can move forward, backward. You can change the speed of him. You essentially just set Rush Jet up and let him go while you do whatever on top of him mm -hmm. while he's gone. Aww, oh, oh, too bad. So the this T-Rex is so overwhelmingly powerful that whenever you spawn him and you leave the screen, he will follow you. Yeah, he does not leave you alone. He leaves his jaw behind, though, and then he finds a new jaw. He just starts equipping things from the stage. Mm -hmm. <laughs> It's really hard to do, though, because you have to, like, hit the right spot for him to come down and then just climb down the ladder. Yeah. It's all right, though. Um, so now we have to go save our friend Beat. Uh, Beat is in bird jail uh, because of what he did in Mega Man 5. So we're going to free him. Thank um, you, Proto Man, for that hot tip to bring <laughs> yeah. the forest down. 
We've never saved a beat without him. Never would have tried that. <laughs> no. All right, now here comes Slashman. Um, maybe Ion can, can go over what Slashman does while I panic. Okay. <laughs> So Slashman is very interesting in that he doesn't stick around for very long. He leaves after a little bit of time or after you hit him a couple of times. Like this, he goes up and he'll drop these little ketchup packets onto you. And if you get hit by one of them, you get stuck and it sucks really bad. So uh, it, it's random where they fall. So this is a very challenging fight just for that alone, I would say. Like having to manage the amount of times you hit Slashman plus uh, all that other stuff. It's a beautiful fight. So, uh, you may have noticed he hit Slashman three times, but Slashman normally leaves, like, very, very quickly. So, uh, saving that last hit with the with the weakness weapon that freezes him is kind of the, the big play there. Because he will also leave if you hit him with that instantly. Yeah. So, getting in a couple of hits before, and then the freeze cracker at the end was good. Yeah, once he commits to a jump, he'll also commit to using Slash Claw if he lands near you. So um, you have just enough time to hit him like as he does his jump. Uh, you hit him the second time, and before he's uh, before the AI script tells him to jump off screen, mm -hmm. uh, you can force him into slashing, and then you hit him again. Yeah. There's a super shenanigans way to get four hits in a cycle, and it never works. Uh, it works. <laughs> it works. It sometimes just pretends that you didn't hit him. If you shoot too early. Yeah. Yeah. All right, Springman stage uh, used to be the most boring stage in the game for me. So I added a bunch of really difficult stuff that barely saves time, and now it's pretty fun. Yeah, this is one stage where there's not really a lot going on, like, background-wise, so you can use Junk Shield and not really worry about much slowdown. But then there's PJ, who thought it was really boring, so he just does all this other stuff he does. <laughs> yeah, so one of my goals, since the weapons are so good in this game, is to try and use ammo evenly. So there's not just like one weapon that's going to be soaking up the, the weapon refills if I get one. Um, this way, like if I get a weapon refill, I'm only going to be losing like eight frames or something. Oh, the proto shield. No dude. thanks. <laughs> <laughs> I was excited for a second. Nope. Like, what are you going to do? Yeah, the secret tech. I've been hiding it. <laughs> yeah, we're going to use uh, dog suit again here. So the, the special item that's hidden in this stage is Otto's hyper bolt. Um, so if you go to Otto's, Otto's shop, um, now some things are half price, and I think he has more inventory. I think that's what's un what unlocks that. Yeah. Like most of the stuff that you'd be able to get from like the rush search thing where you dig them up, he doesn't get a lot of that inventory until you get that hyper bolt. But we're not even going to visit the shop at all. No, we, no. I feel like a lot of people don't know the shop exists. You just press select on the boss leg screen. Wow, really? That one felt good. All right, well, we missed it, but the uh, on the plus side, we get to do the most fun fight in the game. So the, the weapons that Peach is using on Springman here are not his weaknesses at all. Except for Slash right there. Yeah. But the thing is, like, you see how long he's invincible, like, when he's kind of, like, blinking? I don't know if that shows up on the screen. But whenever he's flickering like that, it's a good, like, what, three it's seconds three, or Yeah, it's three full three seconds Three whole seconds where he's not, he's not vulnerable at all. So yeah. you, you can't just slash him over and over. Or if you're really good, you can do what PJ was doing and just hit him with a bunch of little things to speed it up a tiny bit. Yeah, so um, he dies in seven hits from Slash Claw, but it's faster by three seconds, three and a half seconds, to hit him 14 times with assorted other weapons instead, just because you get uh, shorter invincibility frames. Yeah, because it, it's normally like one second of invincibility per hit or something. Yeah. So with the math on that, it comes out to be a little bit better, despite the massive amount of damage Slash Claw does. Yeah. All right, this is our last weapon. Dr. Light tells us how to use Wild Coil, and immediately afterwards, the lab is destroyed. I don't know what happened. <laughs> Did you know you can charge up Wild Coil? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, the most I didn't mean like this. <laughs> <laughs> Was that you, Mega Man? Right, like, the only thing that survived in this lab is the Met helmet on the table in the corner. <laughs> Mega Man should have kept it <laughs> indestructible. Kept it. Um, the other really important thing here is that this computer on the left side, the one that's shaped like Auto, it's, a, it's expression actually changes. So during all the other cutscenes, he has circle eyes, and now he has like the equal sign eyes. He's very upset. Mm -hmm. All right, we've got, uh, we've got some more time for donations if you'd like to. Yeah, absolutely. 
We have $25 from Mode Wondershot. Best of luck to one of my favorite streamers, PJ. Send Wiley tumbling down the stairs. And $50 from HJA. Best of luck to PJ on Mega Man 7. Shout outs to the best community in speedrunning. Agreed. And $100 from Frenzic. First time donating. Love me some AGDQ Mega Man runs. Great run and great commentary. Keep on rocking. Hey, if you like Mega Man runs at AGDQ, there's uh, a sweet Mega Man relay uh, Wednesday night. Oh, yeah. It's going to be Mega Man 4 through 6. That's going to be awesome. It's going to be amazing. And then, of course, there's also Mega Man X Race, 100% Race, and X3, 100%, and X4, I think, on Friday. Something like that. There's plenty of Mega Man. Really good content. All right, so these are the castle stages. These are really complicated and have some really cool strats. But they have some jams playing in the background. Yeah. Get revenge on these little dudes. Yes. <laughs> For all the times they've killed me. Yeah, so that's uh, a spot where you traditionally use Junk Shield, and you would use it in the upcoming room as well, but uh, Junk Shield has some problems in these rooms. This is another room where, because of all the birds, it causes a lot of lag unless you get them, like, instantly. Scorch Wheel is so underappreciated. Okay, nice. Rush coming to the rescue again here, as soon as he does that slick jump there. Okay. Rush is a good boy. Mm -hmm. Very good boy. Alright. So coming up is base. Um, good guy base again. Uh, this fight is completely deterministic, so as long as I move consistently, base is always going to take the same actions. So you can like choreograph this really elaborate dance. And uh, hopefully it goes well. Oh yeah, so one thing I'm going to mention really quick. You would think, but the door is set up perfectly. Why don't you just shoot the noise crush through and insta-kill base or whatever? That monologue he has lasts so long that the, the noise crush will disappear before he's done talking. Yeah. That was a perfect fight, too. That, that was, was a, a really good fight. That was the earliest jump you can kill him, and I ended right by the door. Mm -hmm. um, so... In contrast to the perfect fight we just saw, here's Gutsman G. He's gonna show us what happens. <laughs> when you get too cocky, Guts G is here to ruin it. Yeah, there it is, bar block. He can charge, charge, nice. He can charge at you like this and try to grab you, but if you just slide into him, you're kind of too low for him to grab. Uh, he can make those rocks fall down, which you can knock into him and do a lot of damage. That was awesome. Well, uh, Really yeah, good fight. That was a good fight. Yeah. He proved us wrong. Wonderful stage. Yeah. Oh, well, we know, what's, <laughs> yeah, we yeah, know what's coming up next. Th that's the attitude of Gutch G. He, he doesn't do what you tell him. He's like, he's going to ruin everything. He's like, no, I'm not. Yeah. <laughs> I'll show you. I'll show me. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Wily 2 is... Uh, Wily 2 is probably my favorite of the, the castle stages. I really love this stage. There's so much cool tech, but it also has... Uh, one of the most frustrating bosses, so I think I'm in the minority here, but it's a cool level. It's a really nice level. It has a lot of nice, like, uses of the weapons because it's very, like, vertical as yeah. opposed to a lot of other stages. That in it has probably one of my favorite fights in the, 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 the mini boss that's about to come up. Mm -hmm. It's a very, very fun fight. Barely snuck by there. Ooh. Okay. Let's see if I can uh, get the fight for you, Ion. Oh, yeah. So there are a bunch of ways to fight uh, base two. He's also kind of deterministic, but uh, there's one random component to him. He'll, he'll pick a side, left or right, at certain points. Um, but I developed this vertical fight, which is quite a bit different from the other ones. Uh, yeah, he fights him entirely different from everybody else. All right, left side. He's too far to the right for some reason. Yeah. This might actually work. No. Oh, no. No. Um, I have not actually seen him do this before. Oh, goodness. No, I have not yeah. seen him do that before. No. Um, so when he picks left side, sometimes he doesn't go left enough. What's ammo like? Yeah. Fine. The main key to this thing is you want to kind of space him properly so that when he jumps, he lands on the next platform up. Yeah. Repeatedly. He, like, you don't want him to get stuck down there, because then he flies around and shoots you with his homing fist that yeah. 
does like a quarter of your health bar or something <laughs> ridiculous. And his possession on the left side should be based on where Mega Man is, so I'm not really sure why he uh, did that. There we go, this is much better. We'll just do that, wonderful. Good fight. <laughs> All right, so we're a little bit short on ammo. Um, I should be able to kill the tire guy with Buster. Should take four shots after this. All right. Or like 10. Yeah. Or like 10. It's Ooh. So I like to use Coil for the entire second half of this stage. Just to build morale with Rush. Rush really needs to be in top form for the, the final fight. Okay. Good. So here's Gammerizer. Um, yeah, you wanna you wanna say some words? Uh, uh, okay. So he does. <laughs> there that. we are. <laughs> so when he's ramming his head against the wall, you can't do anything. And the amount of time he rams against the wall is variable. He can ram into it like once or like five times. So if you're going for a good time, then it's pretty much on Game Risers to where the, whether you lose or gain like 10 or 15 seconds or something ridiculous. The amount of times he spits fire is also variable too, and the longer he sticks his neck out, the more times you can hurt him. So that was a pretty good That fight. was fine, yeah. That was a good. But like the, the worst fight you can get are where he sticks his head out, spits fire once, yeah. instantly pulls his head back in, he rams, rams against the times. wall like four or five <laughs> times, leaves, and then just repeats it again. And you don't have enough time to like kill him in that amount of time, so. Yeah, the best feeling is when he, he starts his second mini turtle cycle when you're one hit away from killing him and you just have to sit there. Oh, it's and great. Um, and it, yeah, as you saw, you can put the mini turtles in uh, a bubble with Danger Wrap and you can kick it back into him and it does, I think, eight damage. It's eight, yeah. It's uh, the strongest damage source in the game. Danger Wrap is very, very good. This is another level that has a lot of vertical segments. The first screen is the most infamous, though. Can you believe that these are jumps that they thought were reasonable? Woo! Yeah. Yeah, we're clapping for <laughs> <laughs> Did it. He beat the game. Uh, yeah, we're just going to do that. If you get a drop there... No. Yes. No. No. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, Ion. It'll happen one day. No, it won't. No, it won't. <laughs> it won't. If it happens one day, there's been a terrible accident. <laughs> nice. Double. I mean, you already made a terrible accident by having me on couch, so... <laughs> Whatever. Good. <laughs> um, I probably should grab an extra life. This one really sucks. Yes. <laughs> you, yes you, you can kind of tell, like, wow, I really wouldn't want to do that, and nobody does. So just use Rush. He's your best friend. He is. Yeah. He's everybody's best friend except Wily. Um, this is another branching stage. So in the the room that sucks, uh, you can take the bottom path. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's a spike maze, followed by a mini boss, followed by another spike maze, auto scroller. Yeah. Or you can take the top path and get goodies. Yeah. If you take the bottom path, you get an E-Tank after dying 20 times to an underwater spike maze. Or you can take the top route and get an S-Tank, which refills your weapon energy, too. Yeah, an E-Tank and an S-Tank and a W-Tank. Yeah. Come on, Mega Man. This is a pretty straightforward fight. Not too much to say other than like he's only vulnerable up top, like where the little green triangle is on his head. Sometimes, sometimes his nose. Yeah. Um, it's it's, it's kind of because he bobs up and down. It's kind of hard to know yeah. where exactly to hit him, but it's it's fine. It's fine. All right. So coming up are the refights. Um, there shouldn't be any risk of dying. Nah. But. How many lives do I have? I should maybe grab one just in case. Because the refight stage is like six minutes long. It's uh, it's an ordeal. You might have none. Yeah, I think I do. Because you, you've died a good amount of time. We had two unintentional and one intentional. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, there you go. You're fine. Then. Yeah. So, um, like we mentioned a few times, we want to avoid the flinch animation at all costs. So we're going to be using soft weaknesses for a lot of these fights. Yeah. And by soft weaknesses, he means like things that do more than one damage. That's right. that's pretty much yeah. it. 
Yeah, so we're gonna use Noise Crush plus Freeze Cracker on, on Slash Man. Um, we're gonna be using Scorch Wheel on Freeze instead of uh, Junk Shield. And Noise Crush again on Spring Man. Um, the refights are pretty neat. We almost used all of Nice. Nice. Ooh. Oh, so I, I didn't think that was gonna come up, but uh, one thing Slash can do whenever he's splashing at you, he will destroy anything that's there. <laughs> So if like if you shoot him with anything like if, whether it's a Buster Shot or Noise Crush, it's just obliterated. Mm -hmm. Which is why you jump over him when you shoot Slash most of the time. Speaking of soft weaknesses, Scorch Wheel is a very good one on Freeze Man here because it just does a ton of damage. Nice. Yeah, it does. So it does three damage instead of four, but again, it doesn't invoke the. Uh, the flinch animation that gives them shorter iframes. And I think it only requires two extra hits. Yeah. I think it, yeah, it's nine instead of seven. Mm -hmm. And it's a much more fun fight. Oh, agreed. It's also much less laggy. <laughs> yes. Yeah, if you do it properly, uh, you'll kill Freeze Man uh, before he makes the icicles on the ceiling again. And when you kill him with the icicles up there, it's lag festival. Mm -hmm. It's especially bad if you get the really bad animation where he like pops up to the top of the screen. Oh yeah. Yeah. Nice. That was hot. Cool. Yeah. Nice. So charge noise crush does two damage and danger wrap does four. So if I hit uh, Cloud Man with two charge noise crushes while he's out of reach, uh, we save one hit. And now we get this fight again. Again, we don't want to use Slash Claw, so we're going to be using uh, Noise Crush here. The fight's going to be very similar to before. Is it? Really? With some difference. This should be fine, actually. Yeah, you'll get him with another Slash. Yeah. Oh. Will I? Hmm. <laughs> you keep me on my toes, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh, so when he's trying to slide into the, each of these boss teleporters, he has to walk for a little bit. Otherwise, he's going to actually have, make the elevator go down, and that's a bad, bad thing. Uh, elevator sucks, because all you have to do is press down, and it makes you move. So you can press down and jump at the same time for a slide, and it'll still read it as, you want to move the elevator down, right? Yeah, right? Yeah, I got you. <laughs> got you, man. All right, burst again. Um, this fight, unfortunately, you just have to deal with it but he doesn't get a lot of additional iframes from hitting with the weakness, no. so it's still a pretty quick fight. And yeah, like, he gets knocked backwards, but he's right next to the wall, so it doesn't really matter that much anyways. Yeah. All right, so on Shade Man, I'm going to be intentionally taking damage. I want to take damage uh, three times against him. And also, for some reason, the boss room and Shade Man's, like, in the, in the refight is shorter, so I'm able to just jump up and hit him with Wild Coil instead of bouncing it. Really, as nice as the super adapter fight is, it's still faster to do the coil. And since you have it, you may as well. All right. Let's see what Rush does. Let's see if we get to see it. All right, Rush. So what we're hoping for here is an ammo drop or a health drop. Uh, there's no special item here, so Rush can find anything. Yes! <laughs> Yeah! All right, now we have the second part. Yes! <laughs> Woo! Yes! Get that, that was uh, That was Wily Machine. That was yeah. awesome. So Rush Surge can interrupt your... Uh, he can interrupt cutscenes, so you gain control in the middle of the cutscene. And since bosses are vulnerable while their health is filling, you can just kill Wily Machine uh, before the battle begins. This is one of the hardest final bosses in Mega Man, I think. Yeah. Like, agreed. even when you know what to do, it's a little finicky. Because he can appear in one of, like, eight or nine spots. I forget the exact number. Uh, uh, but eight, eight spots. Eight spots, yeah. But thankfully, he does the exact same thing every time, where he just shoots these out. And the way to dodge them is they kind of move towards you twice. All four of the orbs move towards you once, 
a little bit and then they move to your next spot. So ideally you want to move to a spot that's like on the opposite side and then you move away so they're flying like away from you. It's so some pattern. <laughs> yeah. It's something. So I can hit him twice with charged coil. It's the only thing that does two damage to him. Um, but I can only hit him twice with charged coil on the, the low spawns. Yeah. For all the other ones, I can do uh, a charge coil and then a freeze cracker, or if he's in the top center like he's been giving me, I can only hit him once. Yeah. It really sucks, but one of the biggest time variances in this run is the final boss here. Yeah. Because, like, you see how long he can be gone for. So, if he spawns up top and you can't do anything, then you're just having to sit through so many time. more of these. All right, well, we made it through. We did it. That was, that was interesting. Um, but yeah, that's, that's Mega Man 7. Um, the bonus of playing the English version is we get this excellent flavor text at the end. Mega Man has finally had enough of Wily escaping. He's had it. <laughs> <laughs> I gonna do what I should have done years ago. <laughs> But everything's fine in the end. We don't need to see how this resolves. We'll just <laughs> um, yeah, so that's Mega Man 7. I hope you enjoyed it. This game's awesome. Uh, if you're interested in learning how to run this game or any of the other classic Mega Man games, feel free to check out the, uh, the classic Mega Man Discord. Uh, we're all happy to help uh, any way we can. Um, if you liked this and you want to see more Mega Man, again, the Mega Man Relay. I'm more than a robot. <laughs> Get him, dude. <laughs> he had his chance. Um, yeah, the Mega Man Relay again is going to be uh, Wednesday night, Mega Man 4 through 6. So you can see the events leading up to this. Why Beat is in Bird Jail, and why Wily's in the other jail. Yep, I think he's setting up for the quick kill right now. You just seem to tell him. Unless you guys have anything else, I'm, I'm good here. Thanks so much for watching. Thanks for the support, and uh, keep on watching. We're just getting started here. Thank you so much, PJ, for that fantastic Mega Man 7 run. And it seems that everybody out there has been really enjoying it as well. There has been a whole lot of love coming in. We have $10 from Will Gallant. Thank you, PJ, PLC, and Games Done Quick for all the entertainment throughout the years. And just remember, do the thing. Let this donation go to PJ's Choice. And we have $25 from Mr. Cab 55 Let's go, PJ. Don't freeze up. Burst Wily's bubble and get his head out of the clouds. Bust up his junk robots. Slash through his traps. Spring into action and throw shade at him at turbo speeds. Based PJ. Thank you, Mr. Cab. <laughs> All right, speed friends. So I'm going to be signing off here shortly. I'll be back later on this week, but don't worry. I'm leaving you with Geek Etiquette. She'll take very good care of you. We're just going to go ahead and jump off into our sponsor video, and she'll be back afterward. Actually, surprise, surprise, you get to be stuck with me for just a little bit longer. <laughs> All right, we have $100 from Maiku Yama's mom. Great work, everybody. I'm proud to be part of all this. $100 from Psy228, $100 for 10 years of greatness. I'm so excited for this week of runs and fun and look forward to the next decade of awesome. 
Looking forward to all the runs and can't wait to throw more donations in during my favorite games. Thank you everyone for all you do. We have $50 from McClanahan. I had to donate $50 for Riven because I need to see a game that took me 11 years to beat get finished in less than 15 minutes. Oh boy, I feel that one. Riven was part of my childhood as well. And McClanahan is, of course, talking about the Riven Opera Easter egg, Easter, Easter egg donation incentive, which is at a little bit over 2,300 of 3,000. So that one's pretty close to being met. If you want to see a little bit more of that Riven, that Cyan Games goodness, get those donations in. And I'd also like to call all y'all's attention to the Escape from Yavin 4 bonus level incentive, which is still only sitting at a bit over 2,600 of 7,500. And that one's going to be, that one's the next game after Ratchet and Clank Future, the upcoming runs. So if you still want to see is that Escape from Yavin 4 bonus level, get those donations in and get that challenge met. We've got $100 from Starfire Girl. Always happy to tune in and watch these awesome speedruns every year, especially when it's for a great cause. My mother and sister have both beaten breast cancer and I have started early testing to keep an eye on my health. Thank you for all that you do and good luck to the runners. Cheers. All right, friends, now for realsies this time, I'm signing off and passing off to Geek et Etiquette. So some words from Twitch and then see you all next time.
Hello everybody, my name is Geek Etika and welcome to Awesome Games Done Quick 2020. And uh, first time attendee, long time viewer here. How are we all doing? I hope you're all good. Yeah, that's what I like to hear. All right. So what we're going to do is we're just going to have a little quick break and then we'll go on to an interview. And so uh, right back after this. How many years have I waited for the one they called the warrior of light? If history must be unwritten, let it be unwritten. Become what you must. Become the warrior of darkness. Welcome back, everyone. All right, let's uh, read some donations while we get ready for the interview. Let's see here. Dun, 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 dun. All right, we have, let me just refresh. All right, we've got $10 from Rail Mom, who says, really looking forward to enjoying the 10th anniversary celebration Thanks to the organizers, staff, volunteers, players, and participants for continuing this great tradition of raising money for charity while breaking video games. Thank you so much for your donation. All right, and we are now ready for the interview, so I'll hand it over to Spike Vegeta. What's up, guys? Welcome back to AGDQ 2020. As a thank you for that person who went, woo, <laughs> just at the side of me. All right, sounds great. <laughs> uh, I am Spike Vegeta. Yeah, and I am joined by someone even more exciting. He's going to break something. <laughs> Fiesel, what? <laughs> no, dude, you are officially more important than Fiesel. That's you have true. one more run. Now, I think technically two more runs than Fiesel in GDQ history. No one's more important than Fiesel. I, I mean, he's, <laughs> he's a pretty dreamy individual. I've been enjoying getting to do the pre-show with him. Did you know that you had done the most runs in GDQ history? I did, yeah. Someone mentioned that <laughs> a, few, a few years ago. <laughs> they gave me the total. Like, did you know you did 34 runs? I'm like, what? 34? Oh, no. I think this was 37 or 36. Oh, my. I haven't even played 36 video yeah, games. Yeah, me neither. That's insane. <laughs> <laughs> So I want to ask you a little bit about, just did the Mega Man 7 run, awesome run of Mega Man 7, I know you probably weren't happy with all of it, but uh, what'd you feel about the run overall? Um, yeah, I mean, besides, besides the scattered disasters, I think it was great. <laughs> I mean, like, a lot of the stages start to finish were awesome, mm -hmm. uh, and then a lot of the other stages were, were pretty great, and then boo-boo and then time and then happened. Boo-boo <laughs> time <laughs> I want to ask you why, why Mega Man 7? Because there's obviously, like, people say with any series, oh, which Zelda game, which Mario game? There's 5,000 Mega Man games yeah. out there. I know you've also dabbled with running Mega Man 3 in the past, a couple mm -hmm. other Mega Man games. There's all the X games. I mean, there's, you know, Battle Mission, all this stuff. Why Mega Man 7? Because I feel like that is the one that's really been your baby. You put so much time into it. Yeah, that's definitely the one I invested the most time into. And uh, honestly, I don't know. <laughs> I, I mean, because I, I like all of them, but uh, there's, there's just something about the Mega Man 7 run that was always appealing to me. Mm -hmm. Like, even back in 2009, when I was first dabbling with stuff, uh, there's just really weird mechanics and interesting weapons in that game. That, mm -hmm. um, like, all the weapons being viable and all the weapons being so different, they yes, all cover different top angles. top to bottom, yeah. Um, you have weapons that, that scoop up, weapons that fire downwards, uh, weapons that you can only use on the ground, weapons that stop you when you move them. Um, I liked that versatility. Yes. And uh, you're not inhibited by, like, having to pause to switch weapons. Mm -hmm. You can just, hey, I want to use Scorch Wheel here. Okay, you'll just press R. Right along, and, yeah. It makes for a lot of really it. interesting boss fights, because a lot of classes that Mega Man can fall into, here's the weakness weapon, that takes them out. Sure. You know, but there's a lot of really interesting how you switch between them for, like, Slash Man, mm -hmm. for Spring Man. It's really cool stuff. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. So, uh, let's talk a little bit. We got, again, social media questions coming in constantly for our different interviewees from you guys. I want to talk about, again, we got to talk to you. You've been around one of the longest in GDQ's history, just dating back. We got from uh, Size Waslib. I didn't bother reading these names beforehand. I hope I mostly am hitting them right. Over, and I'm going to make this a two-part question. Over the 10-year history of GDQ, what has been your favorite moment? And I would ask, what is your favorite specific PJ run you've done? Mm. And what is your favorite GDQ moment you've gotten to see or be a part of? So there are a lot of, uh, like, real obvious moments. Like, the first time we hit a million. 
Yes. Uh, and hitting, hitting the three million, those kinds of milestones are, are amazing. Uh, but gameplay-wise and run-wise, uh, I think the, the legendary Super Metroid race. <laughs> yes, the, yes. The Metroid race. Um, that one was pretty outstanding. And the one that I'll, I'll never forget is being in the room for uh, CGN's F-Zero GX. Yes. Okay? Oh, my God. Uh, because CGN, like, at that point, I didn't even know if he actually existed. It was just like... <laughs> it this, was a robot. This guy sometimes uploads report. videos that just blow your mind. Mm -hmm. uh, so to actually see him and, and see him do that live with the same consistency and level that you yes. saw from the, the videos was uh, staggering. But, I mean, the, the quality of the gameplay has only been increasing as time goes on. So, like, every year there are ridiculous runs, mind-blowing runs. Yeah, the, the bar that we have to meet as runners. There's a reason why I don't do runs anymore. <laughs> I'm like, no, that's, that's too much pressure. I can't do it. I want to ask you from Sir Birdsley, what, or Beardsley probably is how you say it, what is your favorite, very specifically, PJ moment over these past 10 years? And I'm, I'm explaining that, not even GDQs. <laughs> you oh, are no. second a speedrunner, first you blow stuff up. That is the number one thing on yeah. your resume. <laughs> what is your favorite PJ moment? Um, oh, man. <laughs> I, think, I think the, the extreme desync <laughs> that Mecca and I got during our Battle Black Theater run. Oh, my God. Where we were playing two completely different stages at the same time. And I was looking yes. at his monitor, and I had the skeleton of his stage on my screen, but with all the hazards of the next stage. <laughs> So I couldn't actually continue, um, and we were playing in insane mode, so a death resets the whole stage. And he can't, like, he's not watching my screen all the time. He's just playing normally, and then the stage resets. I'm like, I don't know, man. I jumped on the platform, and I, I'm dead now. <laughs> um, yeah, so that's, that's probably my favorite of the disasters. That's, I, I have to point this out. I was just told this before the interview. This is true. This is scary. <laughs> we literally, there was an error message that popped up here at GDQ for some reason. And Cool Maddie said, it's something, 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 PJ. Something, 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 something. I hope you learned your lesson. <laughs> <laughs> PJ, it's always a lot of fun having you here. Uh, we're going to kick it over real quick, though, to our prize man, our resident prize man, Sent. Tells you about some of the really cool stuff that you guys can uh, get into drawings for. What you got, dude? Hey, thanks a lot, Spike. So yeah, I'm I'm over here at our, our wonderful uh, prize couch. As you can you can see, they they kind of they kind of stole it from me. But that's that's cool. I'm I'm sure we can make something work here. So we we have some great like. Per, let me just prop it up. Okay, Spike, this isn't gonna work. Can I come hang out with you? Oh sure. All right, it's great, plenty great. Let's let's go over there. You are sitting on a couch with PJ. Uh, uh, no, sorry, he asked you for permission. He's sitting with you. <laughs> all, right, all right, PJ, I, I don't want to alarm you, but I do just want to let you know my headset just died. <laughs> that, that wasn't an intended joke, by the way. <laughs> but it's, it's all good. We have a bunch of really great prizes here. Um, so from our friend uh, Yoshio Kun, we have a couple of really cool perlers. We have a Hammer Bros uh, Beat Sprite perler of, you know, the classic SB3 Hammer Bros. But we also have that really cool one-up mushroom that uh, is right next to Spike, if you want to hold that up for us. Ooh. I, I really love his style. Um, he does something really unique where he actually stacks perler beads, uh, you know, vertically to make 3D sculptures out of them. Hmm. Super cool style. It's only a five dollar minimum donation from now until the end of Super Mario Brothers Three. So like, hey, why not get in on that, man? You know? Oh, it's got the little face. I wasn't even <laughs> holding it the right way, guy. Yeah, it's it's so my good. worst Vanna White. You're holding now, it with the top facing the camera. Yeah. <laughs> oh, is it, oh, it's I'm a like globe. <laughs> it's like a globe. Oh wait, no, it's a mushroom. There we go. We're learning shapes with Spike today. <laughs> Oh, uh, it's all good. So, from our friend Shug Love Sketches, we have this beautiful Dark Samus-inspired uh, ceramic plate. Uh, it's, you know, the visor of Dark Samus, done in a, uh, a black and brown ceramic with a little bit of a yellow for the visor. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's super cool. Uh, PJ, I know you've done some Metroid in the past. What, what do you feel about this? That's pretty sick. All right. I'm yeah. more interested because it's a ceramic, which yeah. is my background. Yeah, no, oh, I had no idea you were. Oh, that's not. You learn something every day. I, you learn something every day, I suppose. <laughs> Again, that's a 25 million, uh, minimum. 25, 25 million dollars. <laughs> 25 every, million dollars. Everyone every donation of 25 million dollars, <laughs> you're in. <laughs> no, $25 minimum donation from now to the end of uh, SMB3. Um, so from our friend... Mecha Fly Guy, we have uh, this lovely Mario Zone cross stitch. I love it. As a big SML2 fan, that, that, oh my god. That game is so underrated. Yes. And I mean, this zone in particular was always like one of the cool ones where you're just like, oh yeah, yeah, Mario yeah. Zone. You're just I'm, in Mario. <laughs> I'm climbing his anatomy. All right. <laughs> exactly. It's super cool. It's a $20 minimum donation from now uh, until the end of SMB3. Everything we're talking about right now, now until the end of SMB3. Uh, from Rectech EXE, we have this lovely little Chain Chompers candy print. 
You know, what, what if Chain Chomp was a candy? <laughs> I, I don't think I'd eat it, but you know, it looks it looks somewhat appetizing. It's like the everlasting gobstopper, except it bites back. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's like it's like a really angry goldfish, I guess. <laughs> uh, but you know, and it comes in extra spicy too. For the brave, that's a ten dollar minimum donation from now until the end of uh, of S and P three. Uh, and last but not least, we have from Duke Got Robert, a, a, you know, a collection of beautiful uh, Binding of Isaac pearlers. You, you got you got the knife. Uh, you, you of course got the uh, the D6, the uh, the lucky die. Mm -hmm. uh, you know you have Doctor Fetus, which uh, makes your tears into bombs. Super cool, useful uh, power up. And you have two other things that I don't remember what they are because I don't play enough Binding of Isaac. But everyone at home who plays it is like, oh! everyone at home who plays it is yelling at scent uh, <laughs> through their screen. Like, come on, you should know this. But it's a super cool Perler set. It's only a ten dollar minimum donation. Um, and guys, of course, we have the grand prize, two hundred dollar cumulative donation throughout the entire marathon. You get your choice of a customized Master Sword Hylian shield, uh, that beautiful um, Zelda fishbone guitar we saw earlier, also available God, as a base. God, that looks cool. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, or you get to create your own custom replica. So, I mean, hey. Wow. That, like, that's, that's great. $200 cumulatively throughout the entire marathon. Um, that's going to be it for the prizes, guys. We've already raised over $53,000. Wow. That's PPF. awesome. It's been like two hours. That's insane. Yeah. Um, and I know that total is just going to keep going up across the marathon, but Spike, PJ, Always a pleasure to see you, PJ. Always a pleasure to watch one of your runs. And um, yeah, let's throw it back up to the front as we get ready for Ratchet and Clank Future Tools of Destruction. Woo! All right, thank you. So are we ready for Ratchet and Clank Future Tools of Destruction? Yeah! yeah. <laughs> All right, so I think we're about ready. And we can hand it over to Killer Lombax. <laughs> All right, just before we go over, we'll just uh, read a couple of donations. We have $75 from Lord S. No message, no problem. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> 